Hey guys, and how's it going? We, uh, on the last video, we got into the Carmen Ghia being able to yard, uh, yard dress street drive. Got all the lights working, horn working, and engines in it. But now it still needs to have the interior kind of cleaned up a bit. This car sat around and in our area, it's very popular for mice to get into all the little fabric-y kind of areas. And then this one is no different. It had the footprints all over it. You can kind of tell where mice are running around on it. And then on the inside of it, the headliner is suspect for having a very <laughs> decent amount of uh, nesting material up inside it. So I plan on taking the seats out of it and maybe we'll put some tarps down and start pulling that headliner out of there and see what we get because we need to get it so that it um, smells about as good as it looks. And uh, the outside got cleaned up too. You guys are complaining about my dirty windows. Hey, little thing at <laughs> a little out of time. So I'll get you set up with the camera, get the seats out of it, and uh, we'll start getting the headliner down. See what kind of surprises are hanging out in there. All right, I got some drop cloths down inside there, and seats out. I would think our best bet would probably be to try to figure out what holds this lip up. Maybe we get this to pull down. And then we can get into the side of the headliner. I'd like to peek on the inside of it just in case, but I have a feeling that thing is all trashed that we're just gonna be end up slicing it out. I would say that is like, you know, mouse piss stains all through it. All right. Let's do a little sideways exploratory action and then go from there. Yeah, instead of pulling off this end, that's gonna be fun to get back in. Yeah, let's see what we got for or just a bunch of small screws. Uh, yep, a little bunch of tiny little Phillips. Let's get those out of there. I guess that molding's off. Let's see if we can find an area to start with. Yeah, have to work on that with a blade or something. Anybody looking back at us yet? <laughs> we gotta illuminate some eyeballs. Well, there is foam up above it. Let's get one of the rods out if we can. Here we go. Let's see if we can get a little more out of this corner opened up. Looking over here. What are you guys looking over there for? Hmm. Oh, look, wanna see? If the light helps or hurts you. Well, that's a big old nest right there. Who is living in that location, huh? Let's uh, glove up, get a mask up, bring the garbage can over. See if we can just kind of swath that thing right out of there. Yeah, it looks like it goes right through. Yeesh. All right, you ready? Not gonna get anybody that's live. That smells good. I wonder why the car had a distinct odor to it. I got, a, I got something. I can feel him. He's napping. I guess I prefer dead ones over live ones. But you know, we really don't think we're going to be saving that headliner. 
This ought to be nice and sweet. Yeah. That is a nasty piss man. If you could smell it now. Let's go take a peek in a little closer now. We got that out of the way. Yeah, I'd say she's done. Want to see? I don't know if the light helps or hurts. That uh, is what we got. I was hoping to kind of paint the roof. Looks like the roof is always white on this car. And let's go. I'm going to take a razor blade, I think, and slice out the headliner. And get that out of the way. And maybe we can kind of clean up inside there. Yeah. We'll go over the other side. Let's get the rods out if we can. up inside. Okay, let's see if that can get you looking up at the headliner. Not much of an area that wasn't piss stained. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Right, I gotta go take a razor blade and slice off the rest of what is there. I think the back sections we could probably leave going down the pillars, the C pillars, right there and right there. I think they're just kind of glued on anyway. I don't know about the front. Nobody take the glass out to do that. We'll just take a blade and slice out what we want. That's pretty stained too. Alright. Be glad it's not smell o vision, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> and that's not hot out. So definitely uh, had a colony up inside there. And I took a razor blade, ran around and sliced off all the bits and pieces. Now, they had to be getting up here somehow. So they, they must have been traveling through one of the, the tubes or all of them or who knows. And we know a good way to kind of get down inside there. I'm going to shove a shop vac up into the corners. See if I can kind of draw out what I can. Maybe run a wire down in, in there in the pillars. And see if we can snake anything out. And or probably just come back with an air gun and try blowing through and try to blow through those passages. It looks like they just sprayed that ceiling is... More of like a, you guys can't see anything, can you? More like a sound deadener. That's not mold or anything that you're looking at. It's just like a spray on, probably to keep the roof from rattling, is my guess. Looks factory. Yeah, an air gun worked the best. I was able to come in from the bottom and shoot upwards through that passage. That shop vac didn't do anything. Came over this side, pulled the uh, door card off the back. I got new ones on order to access the side on this one. And this one's got a two by four stuffed inside it. I would have a feeling that that was somebody's body work. Is that someone's idea of, to push the body panel out? You can see the, the Bondo squirting through right here. 
where they came in probably with a slide hammer he yanked it out at some point all right let me get those front two done yeah let's get that back package tray uh underlayment out of there I'm sure it's holding smells too Yeah, I'm sure that's where they probably took some of their nesting material from. That's out of here also. Goodbye. We've got this kick panel behind the, uh, under the back seat. I see some stuff kind of sticking out. It's good. I'm not sure how that's going to come out of there. But I have a feeling there's probably a road for critters also. attached right here somewhere. Is that just glue? A tab or something right there. There it goes. Is that a screw right there? No. Yes. Yeah, more nesting. Let's go pull that right out of there. More crapola. Guys like to hide everywhere, huh? What is that? Afraid to ask. Afraid to find out. All right, it's a pillow. <laughs> right, let's get rid of all that stuff too. I'll just break that right out of there. Shaky cam. At least I don't see a bunch of rust. That's good. It's all pretty solid metal. I'm gonna go clean that out of there. Now that I got that garbage can out of here, it smells a hundred times better. Definitely an improvement. I took the center console carpet out of the way. I was looking into the, the shifter. Shifter. Emergency brake. Let's get some light. and the shifter is flopping in the breeze shifter again <laughs> the emergency brake is flopping in the breeze and somebody egged out the back of the uh the socket where the pin goes through not quite sure what's happening there they didn't understand how it came apart or or what but somebody sure beat on that to uh submission looks like they tried to try taking a punch and, and punching the material up to give it more room and when i was looking at it the emergency brake was laying off to one side it wasn't staying in the center of the, uh, the car so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna go fire up the welder and uh, we'll build some weld up in that back bracket behind there just to give that post something to lean against these are your heat controls this one goes to your heater boxes opens and closes the heater boxes and this one uh, dedicates where it comes from and I'll show you where they go so from the engine Back behind there, the heater boxes come through and exit through there, and they would dump down into what's called the heater channels, which are going down each side of the car to the front. But you also have heat that gets redirected right out of these tubes, right there and there. And they have doors on them that open and close too. So that's what that other lever does. Opens and closes those, shuts them off. If they're closed, the heat would run through the heater channel up around up through the dash and out Make sure the other side of those see the hoses up in there with more linkage so it could dump out there and it also dumps out by your feet down on the uh, heater channels also but mm, the defrosters were probably the worst because of the amount of travel that they have amount of distance that they have to go through up around through the vents and up by the time you set it up you you barely get a, a trickle of heat 
coming up to help to defrost the windows. But where it's decent, if you can leave them open and closed, is right here. This will heat the car fairly good because it's only about a foot away from the heater boxes. Two feet away from the heater boxes. And you will get heat pumping into the car. So if you hook this one up, you can turn the heat on and off going in. Again, we don't know, well, we pretty much know the condition of these on the inside of them. And uh, bugs, the same thing, they kind of fail. And here's that other location. You got a vent that you would slide forward and back that would allow you to have some heat by your feet. And they have a tendency to pretty much rust right in place and don't move for the rest of their life after the car is about two or three years old anyway. So now I'm gonna go get the welder, get fired up and go fix that. Couple of blobs of weld, good, good to go. Even tighten that one up too. So now we're gonna move on to trying to I wouldn't call it disinfect. Yeah, probably. I'll show you what we got for a cleaner. So this stuff is called back, back a zap, and it's made for getting rid of odors. And I believe it also has, uh, yeah, some bacteria in it that grow. And I'm not sure if they feed on what's inside, you know, that causes the odors or not. But it can highly recommended. I'm going to give it a shot. We're going to go put that in a little uh, one quart spray bottle and spray down the whole inside of the car, headliner, and everything. And I am going to do my best to spray at least one of these bottles if it decides to come out. One of these bottles worth throughout this whole car. And soak everything down so we get a nice lemony smell when we're done. And I sprayed that whole bottle down. It smells decent. Open the headliners done. Did under the hood, trunk and the hood, both done. You got it hit everywhere. And it's a little rough on the lungs, I have to admit. But I'm gonna let this sit. I'm gonna do the whole engine bay all the way around. Uh, we'll let it sit for about 24 hours. Again, I'm still waiting on some stuff. I got door panels coming in. But we'll just let this kind of dry out and uh, we'll come back and in about a day or so, we'll re revisit the car and see how it smells. See if we have to do any more, then we'll figure out, uh, start putting the interior back together. But, uh, that'll only be for a second for you guys, but I'm uh, going to take a break for about a day. Hey guys, it's like two days later now, and that stuff seemed to work fairly well. The garage and the car kind of smell like a hospital room. Uh, I wouldn't say it's actually a pleasant smell, but I would say it's much better smell than the... Uh, the mouse piss smell that was in here. So I went and I grabbed a quart of black uh, satin oil-based paint. And I think I want to go and paint all that lower section all down and through there. Not so much the roof. The roof, again, they sprayed some kind of, um, uh, I wouldn't say insulator, but probably just to keep the tinny sound out of the roof and uh, dampen some of the noise. So that stuff's not gonna come off. It's, you know, it's, it's on there. And we're gonna cover that with some kind of headliner, but the areas that are still gonna be exposed, like normally the headliner covers all this, you don't see it, but I'm not gonna do that. So I want to clean this stuff up. So I'm gonna come by probably with a piece of like 120 or 80, and I'm just gonna scuff all this up, knock off all the loose stuff, and probably unscrew those windows, and we'll get the, uh, rest of that headliner off of there. Give her a wipe down and we're gonna go brush on some satin paint. I'm probably not gonna be able to show all that because it's just kind of tight in the car to go do that. But this is all the stuff I wanna take care of. Well, again, what was left of that fabric out, I took the window out of the other side. And hopefully this one comes out too. Got the hinge undone. Came out different than the first side. <laughs> now I can get back in here either with a razor blade, cut that material out and help me uh, get in there, in there to paint. I probably used eh, a little under half the quart. And we got the first coat done. Looks pretty good. You guys can't see anything, can you? It just looks all black. 
and it's shiny right now but that it's satin paint so it'll tone down as it dries and good thing about you know the shinier the paint you go the more defects it shows and especially like on rough surfaces like this the duller you go the better it looks that's why like a, a primered car always looks fairly straight and then you put paint on it it's all kind of crappy but again that's just for the what doesn't get covered will look decent which is going to be pretty much these metal pieces you know around the outside i do plan on putting some kind of headliner in it and it also seals in the smell helps seal in the smell of uh, you know the mouse crap that impregnates itself into the the rusty bits and protects it too you know helps the car last a little bit longer all right well, i'm gonna let that do its thing give it about a half hour we'll come back and put another coat on it all right it's right about an hour later did the second coat i think we're gonna leave it at that of course it's all shiny again because it's wet again and lower and then i went and plastered a bunch on the lower section you know why they call it rust oleum because you can paint over rust that should help especially if water gets this sitting in there uh i am gonna go do lunch i think what we got i think we've got a piece of tape we can remove i'm gonna light off There's a piece of trim that goes up there. I wanted to make sure the outside of the car where the white shows didn't get any damage. Alright guys, so it's a couple hours later. And again, that's oil-based paint. And that is going to take a while to dry. I've been waiting on... Uh, i got new door panels all the way around. I ordered them about 10 days ago. And I, I haven't even received a shipping notice on them yet so that's just kind of been holding me up i guess it's okay they're white and uh, white with um you know black paint probably be best to let that stuff cure up so i don't get a bunch of markings on them anyway so this is gonna sit for a few days we've got some other things to get into going shopping again <laughs> something coming home so we'll make this a uh, mid roll for the middle of the week i'm trying to put the big videos on sunday and then, uh, you know, if I have extras, I'm trying to put them out during the week is my battle plan, whether that works or not. But I'm happy with, whoops, smash. I'm happy with what we're doing. The ceiling looks like uh, pretty gross. But again, that'll get covered with a headliner of, of sorts. So maybe that would be the next thing we get into. When we get back on this, we'll have all the pieces to put it together. And uh, should be almost ready to rock and roll, really. Uh, I got to chase a couple of tires. I got a couple of wide white walls. Two of these are no good, but I, I picked up a couple about a month ago. That are the same, because I like to keep that look on there. Do you agree? Want to do a quick cold start? Let me get you in the stand. Yeah, she hasn't fired up in, I don't know, about six days or so. It was definitely cold. Let's go give her a couple of them. Hopefully it's in neutral. All right, guys, with that, I'm going to go sign off. I want to thank you all for kind of hanging out in the garage with me, doing a little bit of wrenching, and uh, we'll get back on this one soon. Till then, later. So we just got putting Brian's dirty window in his bug, and uh, now we're going to go fire up uh, the toy. The guys are saying, we didn't get to see the engine. Really not too much you can see on the outside of it. Other than the big old throaty carbs going down, all the, all the good stuff's down below. Now we're going to go play a little bit. You want to go do a cold start? Yeah. Okay. Right. Right oh, yeah. Things start good.
hits. You broke it, Jay. I told him not to, but he wouldn't listen. I thought the smoke was coming from the tires. <laughs> You know, there's a guy on the internet that does that with a screwdriver in uh, 10 seconds. Yeah, I'm not that guy. <laughs> Let's go. Try. With what used belt you have. But they are funky size because of the crank pulley? Yeah, a little bit. They're just a little bit smaller. That one's probably good. That one got a... That one failing already? No, but it's just a piece of crap that was on it. Just fuzz. Fuzz. What'd you do? Jay said it eats belts. <laughs> it's faster that way, you don't have to run the fan. <laughs>